lovebirds are kind of like golden retrievers except maybe a little bit more territorial and just a little bit more spicier. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maha and my channel name is Brighter Days Aviary. So today I am going to be giving you the much anticipated lovebird care guide and why don't we just get started i think we might need one of our lovebird guests to join us in this video so um, i'm gonna get her right now so just in case you guys have forgotten this is alice grace she is but she is one of my lovebirds um and i hand fed and hand raised her um, and yeah, she's going to be joining us for this video. Hi! So this is my second care guide. My first care guide that I did is um, all about Amazon parents and I will go ahead and put it in the description box and in the little IQ card um, up above. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead and check that out and let's get started. So a brief overview is that lovebirds come from Africa or they originated in Africa and they are small and stocky as you can see. For their lifespan they average anywhere from 10 to 20 years mostly it's going to be between 10 and 15 years. In my own experience females tend to be a little bit more feistier than males so they are very 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 affectionate and they love attention um, a lot. And they're also pretty energetic and they're pretty active as well. They are also very, very strong-willed, fearless, and very, very, very loyal. So another thing about lovebirds is that they literally will take on anyone or anything of any size. So I really, really do mean when I say that these are fearless little guys. And another thing that I've also noticed is that they love to bite other lovebirds' feet and other birds feet why I have no clue but they like to do that so since love birds are very 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 um, affectionate and they love attention I really would recommend um, a pair of love birds if you're not going to be spending um, a lot of time with them because a single love birds a single love bird tons and tons and tons of attention and love I personally um, my love birds are never alone. Um, Alice Grace lives with three other of her siblings in a large flight cage um, and I have my other lovebirds in pairs of two so there is not one lovebird that I have that is kept as a single lovebird. So since these little guys are really really active birds you're going to need a pretty decently sized cage for them. So the minimum cage so the minimum cage size for a lovebird is a 24 by 24 by 24 or a 30 by 18 by 18. And I also have a video that breaks down the initial um, cost of purchasing a lovebird and the monthly costs of purchasing a lovebird. So if you are interested in getting a lovebird but do not know how much money you will be spending or how much money you should be saving up. Um, then go ahead and click on that video. I will leave it up in the IQ card and also in the description box below. So this recommended minimum that I gave you guys should only be um, a home for birds that spend a lot of their time outside of their cage. If your bird is spending most of their time inside of their cage, um, number one, they would need a partner and number two, aka another lovebird, or, and number two, they would also need a larger cage than minimum. So for the bar spacing it should be at 3 8 of an inch or half an inch and their cage should be kept in the room where most of the action is going on. So for a lot of people that would be like the family room or the living room um, or if you spend most of your time in your bedroom, the bedroom would be a good place as well. So places where their cage should not be in is um, near the kitchen or in the kitchen, um, near drafts, AC, and direct sunlight. So now we're going to move on to talking about bowls. 
So I do recommend metal bowls for your lovebird. One should be for food and one should be for water. And if you want to provide more than two bowls, that is completely a-okay. So the only recommendation is that you don't put their bowls under um, directly under their perches because then their droppings will get on them. And as far as perch placement, I would not recommend putting any perches at the bottom one third of the cage. So the um, top two thirds of the cage is the perfect area to be putting perches. So as far as cleaning, you will definitely <laughs> be cleaning the surroundings of their cage every single day because you will find food and feathers and all that craziness all around their cage so you're probably going to be vacuuming or sweeping every single day. So some really good types of bedding is corn cob or you can use newspaper or you can use the paper bags paper-based bedding. Um, you just have to make sure that your bird does not have access to their droppings. So I personally would definitely recommend that you spot clean every day or every other day um, and then also completely change out the bedding once every one to two weeks. Also for the um, cage cleaning, like you know the cage itself, definitely um, recommend hosing it down once every few months and completely taking it apart and deep cleaning it um, about once a year. And by the way, I totally recommend Poop Off. Um, it is absolutely amazing. And not only does it get the poop off like magically, it also gets, you know, other things off like dried up, um, you know, fruit juices or anything like that. Anything that needs cleaning, it takes it off. So definitely recommend Poop Off. So like I mentioned earlier, lovebirds are super, super, super active birds, so they definitely need a wide variety of toys to keep themselves busy. I would recommend um, the minimum to be four to five toys. So lovebirds absolutely love noise-making toys, wooden toys, shredable toys. They also love swings and ladders. So I would recommend that toys should be rotated in their cage weekly and toys should be added, new toys should be added to your cage at least monthly. Lovebirds are also very, very smart, so they definitely benefit from puzzle toys or foraging toys. So as far as perches, I definitely, definitely recommend natural wood perches. I also would recommend rope perches. You just have to watch out for the edges because sometimes when they chew on them, they tend to fray um, and then they can get caught and tangled up in it which is definitely not a good situation to be in at all. So when you are buying rope perches, make sure you're just going constantly watching to make sure that none of the edges are starting to come apart. So as we all know, or as we all should know, do not get dowel perches, please, because they're not good. <laughs> they're not good perches. Um, and also some people are very iffy or a lot of people are very iffy on sand perches. A lot of people don't recommend them. Um, a lot of people are okay with them. I personally, I personally am on the neutral side. Um, I don't recommend them, but I don't not recommend them. Um, I would say if you choose to have sand perches in your bird's cage, then I definitely would recommend only having one and making sure all the other perches are natural wood perches. I personally have only one sandpaper perch in my lovebird's cage and the rest of the perches are rope perches and natural wood perches. So when it comes to food, um, a variety is very much key. So a fresh chop mix um, that would include vegetables, fruits, grains, legumes, and seeds should be given daily. Um, and I do have to say that a lovebird should absolutely not be either on an all seed diet or an all pelleted diet. Um, the reason why I don't want them on an all seed diet or a mostly seed diet is because they can um, become a little bit obese and they also can develop things like fatty liver disease, um, which is when there's just too much fat inside their body. And as far as an all pelleted diet, um, so this is something that I've done a little bit of research on, um, but of course I recommend that you do your own research as well. But um, it is said that a lot of pellets out there on the market are high in protein, which in, which in turn is believed to cause um, kidney or liver issues. Um, so again, an all pelleted diet is not recommended, just like an all seed diet is not recommended. So in my opinion, um, chop should consist of 35% vegetables, 15% fruit, 10% grains, 
10% legumes and 30% seeds. Um, because again, these birds are pretty active, but you definitely don't want them on a mostly seed diet or an all seed diet. Um, but they are pretty active, so you do want to make sure that they do get um, some seeds in their diet as well. So for example, this can be done like you give them a bowl of chop in the morning for their breakfast, and then you give them a bowl of pellets in the evening. Um, now I'm not saying to totally take away pellets from their diet. Um, I do believe that pellets are an important component to a bird's diet, but they should not make up their whole diet. Um, a bird's diet should consist uh, consist of their chop, their pellets, and their seeds, depending on the species of birds. So when we're talking specifically about lovebirds, they definitely should be getting their chop, they definitely should be getting their pellets, and they definitely should be getting their seeds. So personally, I feed Supreme Naturals and Supreme Fruit Blend. Fruit blend. Um, I generally like to mix them to, to mix both of them together. So as far as personality, behavior, intelligence, and speech goes. So like I said before, lovebirds are very active, they're fiercely loyal, they're very loving, affectionate, brave, fearless. Females can be a little territorial as well. Um, females are generally more feistier. I don't think more feistier is proper grammar. <laughs> females are generally feistier and a little bit more territorial than males, um, which, it, you know, it makes sense because out in the wild, the female is the one that is protecting her eggs and the nest, um, and then that's not really the male's job. So lovebirds can learn to say words and um, small phrases, but for the most part, they um, you will generally hear them chirping a lot. And they're also very, very smart, and they're also a little sneaky, but not like sneaky in the bad way, sneaky in like the cute way, but it's kind of like you are so troublesome, but you're so cute at the same time kind of way, you know? So when it comes to sexual maturity and behavior, um, sexual maturity normally occurs at around the age of one year old. Um, females, they can get hormonal and they start nest building. Um, and lovebirds generally are known to be chronic egg layers and um, nest builders as well. But of course, there are definitely ways to curb this. Some ways to um, stop or to try and reduce a female lovebird from egg laying or building a nest is to um, change their sunlight schedule, so making their days. Um, you know, with sunlight shorter to mimic the winter months instead of the summer months. Um, also not providing them things that they can build a nest with, for example, um, not providing them with any nest building material or any toys that they can um, shred off and make a little nest um, with. So just things like that, also changing their diet might also help, removing um, you know, mush mushier foods from their diet can also help. Um, and things like that. So as far as reproduction, um, lovebirds tend to incubate their eggs for 21 to 24 days and then they tend to lay between four and five eggs and a fully weaned baby lovebird will be between the ages of eight to ten weeks old. So as far as training, they are very very easily trainable um, and they are very treat motivated as well and they really do love to please. And of course, since lovebirds have a short attention span, I would definitely recommend keeping training sessions to 15 minutes or less. So as far as health and common illnesses, um, they are generally healthy birds if they're taken care of properly. Um, however, they are, they are susceptible to um, PVFD, which is vegan feather disease, and also chlamydiosis. So chlamydiosis is basically a bacterial um, disease, and this can actually be passed on to humans. So signs of this um, disease is mucus slash pus from their eyes or their nose, if you see them coughing, if they have dark green droppings, if they have diarrhea, difficulty moving or flying. So as far as PBFD, which is, like I said, beacon feather disease, um, it is a highly contagious viral infection. And unfortunately, there's no cure and it directly affects the cells of the bird's immune system and also those found in the bird's beak and feather. So signs that your lovebird might um, be infected with PBFD is sadness or depression, regurgitating more than average or more than normal, pneumonia, diarrhea, their feathers becoming fragile or fracturing and the colors of their feathers fade. Now, since this disease really does um, 
attack their immune system and specifically their beak and feathers. You will be noticing over time that their beak and feathers will be deteriorating in condition. Um, so for example, their feathers might start to break off more um, or just the colors might become a little duller. Their feathers becoming a little bit more fragile and they tend to fracture more. Um, so things like that you will also, you will definitely be noticing in your birds. So as far as availability, lovebirds are pretty common to find in the United States. Um, they tend to go anywhere from $50 to $250. Um, and there are three main types of species that are mostly um, bought and sold in the United States. So that would be the peach face lovebird, the black mass lovebird, and the fisher lovebird. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Comment below on what your favorite species of bird is. Um, and thank you guys so, so much for watching. I am so excited to be making videos for you guys because I have a lot planned for this YouTube channel. So much planned. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see everyone in my next video. Bye guys.